Welcome to this, the final video in a series of three on how to use data generators. My name's Andy Wicks. In the previous video, we looked at how to create an outline for the data generator itself. And we noted that there were a few little wrinkles that you had to take care of. First was that you had to identify the order in which the tables were going to be presented to the working program. Second, we also had to take care to make sure that the foreign keys in the tables corresponded to the number of items in each table. As you can see, I've now done this. For example, in this last table, book, title ID can be any number between 1 and 430, whilst purchase ID can lie between 1 and 30. This means that the foreign keys will fit the data that's being created in the tables above. Now we're almost ready to start generating data, but there is something I ought to explain before we get going. The tables above show when a set of books was bought and when the t books themselves were sold. Since the data is generated randomly, we're going to get some records where the book is sold before it's been bought. And that's obviously nonsense. But we're going to have to run with that because there is no way of checking the date bought items before the date sold is generated. So let's go and generate some data. It takes a moment to come up, but then we get a file. Now I'm going to put this file into my folder for this video. Now when we do that, we can open it in a text editor. I'm using Notepad++ and everything looks fine, except that it doesn't work in SQL. We have a little problem. It doesn't like the quotes round the field names. So author author ID, first name, last name, is not going to work. We've got a little problem there. And I'm a firm believer in the computing principle, if you have a problem, cheat intelligently. I'm going to show you how to overcome this problem, so that if you generate data for your own databases, you'll know what to do. You go into a data editor such as Notepad++, that supports column mode. In this case, if you hold down the Alt key and then drag across, instead of dragging whole rows, you drag columns. And I'm going to go right down to the bottom of the author table. Uh, there were 200 authors, so it takes a little while to get to the bottom. But when I get down there, I'll be able to hit there I go. Now I'm just going to highlight the areas that have the field names in. And when I get here, I can just press delete. And because there aren't that many tables to go through, it doesn't take too long. What you end up with is SQL that works. Unfortunately for you, and because I like you, I've created exactly that here. I've created a file called bookshop.sql and that file contains data that works. It'll work in just about any DBMS. So this data now is available via the link underneath the description so you can download it automatically. Now that we've got it into Notepad, you have to save it, and it's always best to save things that are to do with databases in a file that ends in .sql. That way the system knows that these are SQL commands. Right, we've created the file. Now we need to go to the database management system and get going. What I've done is I've also created a set of commands here that will create the database in the DBMS. Again, 
This code is available via the link underneath the description. And this set of commands includes one at the top that says drop database secondhand bookshop. Normally you won't be using that, but if you do need to recreate the database at some stage, that line comes in useful. I'm going to show you how to use it in just a moment. So now I'm going to go back to my browser and back to PHP my admin. As you can see, I haven't got any databases that are non-standard here. So I'm going to create a database with uh, all the tables in it. If you're working on a system that already has your database set up, then leave out the create database command. So now, back to the text file. I need the create database but you may not. Notice I've left out the drop database command. I'm going to copy that, so Control and C, back to running PHP my admin, Control and V to paste it, and now I just scroll down to run the whole thing. It takes a little while, but as you can see, Secondhand Bookshop is now set up. If I click on the plus sign, you can see I have all the new tables that I asked for. But there isn't any data in them. So as you can see, my database is created. Now I want to start entering the data using that nice .sql file that contains all the insert into SQL commands. The first thing I have to do is to select secondhand bookshop because this is where I want the data to go. Then I'm going to go to More and Import. And now I choose a file. I'm going to choose bookshop.sql. If I double click on that, bookshop.sql is chosen. And because it's .sql, PHP my admin knows that the format is SQL format. So now I'm going to click on Go. It takes a little while for everything to be read in. It's doing an awful lot of work, so it's not, a, not bad that it takes a moment or two. It's now told me that it's created 2,970 records. Wow, that's not bad going. So now I could click on one of the tables and you see the first 25 rows of data. It's all in. And we didn't have to type a single item of data. Nice. Now I'm going to show you what to do to get those categories in. You'll remember that we left categories out when we created the tables in the data generator. That's because I wanted to show you how to bring in other types of data. First of all, you click on Bookshop Category. That's to say this is where I want the data to go. Now I can import again. I'm going to choose a file. And the file I'm going to import is called Book Genre. Now notice this is a .csv file. So PHP my admin knows that the format is CSV. I'm going to show you what CSV is in just a moment. I click on Go and all the data is inserted. If I click on the bookshop category, the first 25 records look like this. So now we've got all the data into the database. All I've got left to show you now is that one file that contains the data that came in with the genre, the CSV file. CSV co stands for Comma Separated Values. And what I've got is a file with two fields. First of all, the category ID. Those are the numbers at the start. Then there's a comma. That's the comma separation. 
and then the data itself. So in this case, action and adventure is the first piece of data, anthology the second, and so on. So this will create a list of 32 records for the different categories of book shown here. And that's all there is to it. You can import data from either .sql or .csv files, so you don't have to type the data in yourself. And that's all there is to data generation. Thank you for watching.